Hello friends, I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. Today I am reviewing Catlantis, a game for two to four players ages eight and up, designed by Prospero Hall and published by Ravensburger Games. Let me take you to the, to the table. There's uh, myself and my two daughters, who have each already decided to take the purple, the red, and I have the blue. We've also already picked our fur order, which would be the, the top or the cat head. And there are five to choose from. These are the two we're not using. And then we've each randomly been given a Finn family, which would be the bottom half. And these are the two that are not chosen. In this game, what you're trying to do is get as many of your fur family fur order and fin family as you can but you want to keep those hidden from your opponents so that they don't steal your points you kind of want to be sneaky but you also want to get your cats in your tails also in this game are coins valued at three two and one and three different treasures you've got the palace the litter box and the laser pointer because cats i'm going to put these to the side and show you how the game is played Normally those would be shuffled in. I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. We're going to go ahead and uh, start with my youngest daughter here as the first player. So we would push out four cards. This game is played in I pick you choose style. So what she's going to do is she's going to select either myself or my other daughter as the opponent who gets to choose. In this case she'll select my other daughter. And then she'll pick two choices of cats of the cards or the treasure in this case, and I think she will try to get this treasure. So she's going to play something that she hopes my other daughter wants, and she'll go ahead and choose that one, but she has no idea. These are going to be hidden. But my daughter does like that cat, so I think she will take the cat to start her cat family there, leaving my original daughter with the treasure. Play would then pass to the left, so it would be my turn. We put up two more cards, and I am looking for this cat with the gold fins and on the board there are none I saw that this daughter took a treasure and I saw that that daughter and these would be face up has already taken a great cat with blue fin so I might shy away from this just in case that's what she's going for so maybe I'll play that one and since I don't really care I'll play one of the black cats and I've chosen this daughter to go against so I would flip this coin this gem over designated that I've chosen her in this round. She would pick, and now I've been kind enough to give her the tail she wants as well, so she'll take that, and she's set up nicely at the start of the game, leaving me with this as my chosen cat, and play would pass with two new cards drawn, and she would go ahead and choose me. She thinks I might want that fin, so she doesn't want to give me that fin. She would designate she chose me by flipping the blue coin, of course, and she wants this, so she's going to throw that out, and she's going for this top, so she'll throw that out, hoping I don't want the fin, but either way, she's going to get a point for either the fin or the cat head, so she's not too concerned. I will go ahead and disguise that I might want this by taking that fin again, even though I don't care about it, it doesn't score me points. I know by me taking it, I've got two in case one of them is going for it, leaving this daughter with this cat, which matches the fin she wants. Play would pass around to my daughter over here, who would have to pick me now because she didn't pick me last time around the table. And there's three things I like up here a lot. She's going for this cat head, so she'll probably throw that out there. And maybe she'll pick one of the two black cats. Or, yeah, she would probably pick the one with the fin she wants as well. So I like the fin here, so I'm going to go ahead and take that from her so she doesn't get her cat head, but I don't know that that is hers. And she'll go ahead and take that cat there. Let me push this out of the way. And it'll pass to me. And I'm left with choice of all these purple ones. None of them match the top I want, but I will go ahead and, uh, and since I have to pick my purple daughter over here, I saw that she has already taken a treasure and a black cat with a brown fin, so maybe she's going after the black cat. So maybe I don't want to give her that one. So I'll push these two up for her. She doesn't care about either. 
Well, actually, she does. She does care about that cat head. So she'll take that cat head, leaving me with this cat. And now I've got two of the fins I want. The play passes to my other daughter, who's left only challenging this daughter. Now she's looking for this cat head, so she probably want to offer that up. And then so far she's seen she's taken a gold and a black. So she's going to offer the gold and black, hoping that she takes it because she's going after it. But she isn't, so this one could go either way. Maybe she'll steal this from her, leaving this worthless cat here. We put cards out, and because everybody's now gone around the table, the gems would flip back over, and everybody would do this again. Play would continue around the table until all the cards are played and everybody's had their turn. And then we tabulate, tabulate final scoring. Scores are based on the coins you got is worth one point, two points, or three points. And then the treasures. Whoever has the most laser pointers would get four points. The second most would get two points. Same with the litter boxes and the palaces. Then you'd count up your the cat tops. And here's a nice little scoring card showing that for each match you make, it's worth more points. So if you get eight or more, Fins matched 15 points, eight or more. Uh, furs matched would be 15 points. So a potential of 30 points if you get eight or more of the tops and bottoms you're looking for, plus potential four points for each of the three treasures, plus another three, six, five or six points for the coins. And that's how you play. My final thoughts on Catlantis are it plays very nicely. Um, it's, it's easy to learn, easy to teach, easy to play with young children. The components are decent. You got the wooden cat pieces. You've got the the cardboard gem bits. The cards are a little bit warped. These these have you know a couple of uses, and they're already a little a little bent. Uh, I don't know if that's the fault of the game or just how long we've had it without playing it. But that that's a little a little distraction from the components. But overall, not bad. They're pretty sturdy still, and and kids for the most part, if they're not too young, could could play with them and, and you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. As far as the game itself, it plays well, it's easy to score. Uh, my daughters could get set up and play by themselves. I don't know that they have, but they could. Um, there's just a little bit of math involved, so maybe the, the youngest of children would, wouldn't get the most out of actually playing the game. But for eight and up, um, it, it gives them gives them a math problem to work on with the final scoring. Uh, as far as what I didn't like about the game, uh, there's some of the cat's cards, and I purposely left them out of the example. Uh, these two fin cards here are uh, they're pretty similar in color, so it took took me especially a while to realize the, the the difference between the two when they were both in play to know which one I might be going after. Uh, the furs don't have that much problem. You know, we you saw the two we play with. We got black, white, the gray the crown and, and the tabby cat so so those those aren't bad but the fins are colored um and and the backgrounds are pretty pretty blue too so a lot, a lot of blue and the the two blue fins in, in the background made it a little bit hard to distinguish uh, at first but once once i realized that you know they, they look the same every time and there's no, no different drawing between between the fins and the furs it was it was easy to catch up on Overall, I, I rate this a 3 out of 5 on my personal scale, or a Board Game Geek scale of, of 6.2 out of 10. Um, it's, it's good for the family, it's easy to learn, easy to play, but in the end, it, it's, it's a lot simpler than I would like, and so, not something I'd be looking for, but if, if you've got kids and cat lovers, or, or both, um, it, it could be great for you. Um, we got it as a gift, so I don't know about the pricing. But I imagine it's probably not that pricey either, so it should, should be an easy pickup, easy play, um, easy, easy to get everybody involved. So, so if that sounds like that's for you, you should check out Catlantis. It, it, it wasn't disappointing at all. So I thank you for uh, joining me for this review of Catlantis, and I hope to uh, get some more reviews out to you shortly. Um, if you like what I have, please uh, like and subscribe and comment below. 
I've got other videos that aren't just reviews, so check them out if you want, and I will see you next time.